Greetings to you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to this uh, beautiful creative day. My name is uh, Martin McCoffey, and in today's video, I'm going to take you through a presentation uh, of an interesting subject titled uh, Reverse VAT. But before we go into this subject, Reverse VAT, there are just two things I want to uh, uh, mention or recap. The firstly thing is uh, I'm encouraging each and everyone out there that please, as we go into public places, may we remember to carry our face masks everywhere and put them on. Secondly, let us remember to wash our hands regularly. If at all there is no water, please remember to move at least with a, a, a bottle of sanitizer and sanitize your, your hands at all times to save yours and other uh, people out there. Because this coronavirus disease, I'm sure by now you understand what it is capable. It, it, it does not choose, it does not age. It takes out anyone. It can either take you or me if we do not encourage each other and practice these uh, rules and regulations which have been provided to us by the World Health Organizations by our, our in Zambia, the Ministry, uh, Ministry of Health in Zambia, and also the, the rules and guidelines which have been provided to us by uh, our employers, our employers. So it's really important. Secondly, it's a recap. For those that have been subscribing and following my channel, can bear and agree with me. Uh, we, we talked about the pay as you earn, which is the personal income tax, where employees are obliged to pay um, this pay as you earn or personal income tax at three different rates if they exceed the threshold of uh, 4,000 quarter, of which we said the rates are 25%, 30%, and 37.5%. Secondly, we spoke about NAPSA, where uh, the employee is obliged to contribute a 5% from his gross income, as well as 5%, the employer contributing 5% on behalf of the employee, which makes, makes it a 10%. And we also spoke about the national health insurance, where the employee is required to um, contribute 1% of his uh, basic salary, as well as the employer is obliged to contribute 1% on behalf of the employee, which makes it 2%. So those are the two major things I just wanted to, 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 to remind you on. And um, moving on to today's subject, reverse uh, VAT. The big question is, what is reverse VAT. So if you want to understand what this uh, uh, reverse VAT is, please come with me with a bit of uh, knowledge and creativeness uh, we might understand together. So um, as I pose the question, what is reverse VAT? Um, let me open one slide. I think this will help us. So as it says, uh, reverse charge VAT presented by myself, Martin McCoffey. I think we're gonna go on the second slide. Uh, that's myself there. Hmm, okay. Martin McCoffey, reverse charge VAT. Okay. Let us see a table of content and see the few things that we're going to discuss about today. So if we open here, we see that uh, we've got a table of content. We want to understand what is reverse VAT. Then secondly, we're going to discuss also on um, what services are liable to reverse VAT. Uh, thirdly, we're going to discuss about accounting for reverse VAT, uh, tax point relating to reverse VAT, and how can reverse VAT be avoided? And how do we appoint 
a tax agent. We'll also talk about registration of the tax agent, accounting for VAT by that tax agent, obligations of the tax agent, and also agents' fees. How are agents' fees taxed? How, how do they come into play? Then we're going to do a very scenario example question so that we understand in what form does a reverse VAT come into play. Okay, so to move on, our first slide says, what is reverse VAT? We want to understand this reverse VAT. So we are saying that reverse VAT is a transfer of liability to account for and pay value added tax on imported services from the person making the supply. The supplier to the person receiving the supply, the recipient. So from this definition, you should see that there is a transfer of liability moving from one person to another. This is what we are talking about. Transfer of liability. But how does that uh, transfer of liability move from one person to another? This is where now you are supposed to claim input VAT. But you find that that input VAT tends is transferred to, to the customer from the supplier and becomes output VAT. Okay. We move to the second slide. Services liable to reverse VAT. What services are liable to reverse VAT? So, services which are liable to reverse VAT uh, is, um, we say reverse VAT is levied on all imported services which are provided by a non resident supplier where a tax agent has not been appointed. A service will be considered imported if it is. One, performed or undertaken in Zambia. Two, utilized or if the benefit of its supply is for a recipient in Zambia, regardless of where it is performed. These are the two fundamental principles you need to know for a service to be liable under reverse VAT. One, it should be performed here in Zambia itself. Number two, the services should be utilized or if the benefit of the supply is for a recipient in Zambia, regardless of where it is performed. But what are some of the examples? What are some of the examples that we can uh, relate to be liable to reverse VAT? So examples, number one, we are talking of management and consultants services. Management and consultant services that are coming um, from outside the country. Number two, technical or advisory services. Number three, it might be marketing information and sales promotions. Number four, inland transportation services. Number five, building construction and constructing ETC as well as installation of services. So such kind of uh, services, these are services that attract reverse charge VAT. Okay, moving on. We have a note on reverse VAT. Some of the important things that you need to note on reverse VAT is that an importation of an exempt service by a taxable supplier is not liable to reverse VAT. What does this mean? A good question I would ask you, the public, is that if you're exempted, if you're exempted, what does it mean? It means that you're not liable. You're not liable to pay anything. You are not liable to pay anything. So in this case, your threshold, meaning one, you are maybe not registered for a value-added tax, Hence, you are exempted, just like the diplomats, the ministers, the presidents. You see that they are exempted to a number of things. Huh? <laughs> Same here, an importation of an exempt service. If you are importing here in Zambia, 
a service that is exempt, you will not be liable to reverse VAT. Secondly, an importation by a person not eligible to register based on nature of supplies. Exempt supplies or nature of a person, privileged person, is outside the scope of reverse VAT. Okay, you are doing an importation. A person that is not eligible to register based on the nature of supplies. It's the same. Exempt supplies, you will not be liable to reverse VAT. A supplier dealing in taxable supplies but not registered due to not meeting the registration conditions under Section 28. Taxable turnover below threshold is outside the scope of reverse VAT administration. I just mentioned earlier, you are not meeting the, 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 the criteria of the registration conditions under Section 28. One, you are not registered for VAT. How can reverse VAT apply to you? It will not apply to you because you do not meet the conditions. Because to meet the conditions of uh, VAT registration, you first need to be able to um, reach a threshold of 800,000 quarter per annum uh, or 200,000 quarter per quarter, which is three months. You should be able to make uh, a minimum of 200,000 quarter for you to be registered for VAT. Hence that point. We move on. How do we account for reverse VAT? This is a very important uh, a subject. We need to know how to account for reverse VAT. So, the recipient of an imported service simply raises a tax invoice based on the value of the service, which is received from a non-resident supplier. The value of the service is the taxable value on which VAT at 16% is to be added and declared as output VAT on the return. The reverse charge cannot be claimed back as input tax. Now, understand the concept which is here, is that reverse VAT can only apply if I am in Zambia, for example, and you are a non-resident who is outside Zambia. You are a non-resident that is outside Zambia. So, I want to import your services. Let's say I'm a farmer. I'm a farmer. And I want you to come and install an irrigation system from your country. So, you are a non-resident and I'm a resident. Okay? This point here says uh, from uh, yeah resident supply of value services tax uh -huh. So that's sixteen percent VAT. That's sixteen percent. If you raise an invoice to me directly, you raise an invoice to me directly as a non-resident. There will be no claiming of import VAT. Hence that. VAT, 16% I'm supposed to claim, will be added back onto the cost of this service. And I will have to pay it as output tax in my return. We move on. Number four, tax point relating to reverse VAT. How do we determine the tax point? How do we determine the tax point? The below are the points to determine the tax point. The tax point to be observed by recipients of imported services in Zambia is the earliest of the following events. Number one, time when a payment is made. A service is provided to you. The time when you're making a payment for that service, that's a tax point, meaning that you become eligible to make a payment to the authorities like the ZRA, etc etc second time when an invoice is received from the supplier immediately the supplier in this case the non-resident issues an invoice to the customer that is determined as a tax point and you should be able to 
you become eligible to pay taxes to the authorities. Thirdly, time when the services are actually rendered or performed. Immediately, the non-resident performs a service of which he is contracted to perform. That is determined as a tax point. That's, these are the three main points you need to take note as a tax point. Just excuse me. My usual routine. Then from tax point, we move on. How can reverse VAT be avoided? How can one avoid reverse VAT? It's very, it's very simple. You just need to appoint a tax agent. Full stop. You, 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 you avoid uh, reverse VAT. Listen, reverse VAT can be avoided by the non-resident supplier. By doing what? Appointing a tax agent who will act on that supplier's behalf in invoicing the recipient of the service in Zambia. Full stop. Once you appoint, once a, a tax agent in Zambia is appointed, do you know what? It's going to raise the invoice and VAT or need to be claimed as input VAT. You see the difference? If the non resident does not appoint uh, a tax agent in Zambia, you know what happens? The 16% VAT will be calculated on the cost and added back as output VAT, which will be bared when submitting the return. But when he appoints a tax agent in Zambia, the agent raises the invoice on behalf of the non-resident and reverse VAT and Yes, the reverse VAT will be claimed. This is what we are talking about. So let us move on uh, another point. How does a non-resident appoint a tax agent? How does a non-resident individual appoint a tax agent? So, a tax point, uh, a tax agent needs to be appointed by the non-resident. Let us see the, the, the ways in which uh, a tax agent can be appointed. Number one, a non-resident supplier who supplies a service to a taxable supplier in Zambia shall appoint a registered supplier in Zambia as a tax agent. A tax agent should be independent of the non-resident supplier, meaning that they should they should be an arm's length between the tax agent and the supplier does is that what it means there is independence they should there should be no link between the non-resident individual or contractor and the supplier who is appointed they should be independent of each other for example, this means that I have a company in Zambia and I have a company in, uh, let's say, Botswana. That, if these two companies are all mine, that company cannot appoint me to act as a tax agent. I need to be independent, doing different work from that uh, contractor from Botswana. Hope you got that one. Let's go, let's move on. The non-resident supplier will notify the Commissioner General of the appointment of the tax agent. Where the Commissioner General accepts the appointment of a tax agent, any tax obligations of the non-resident supplier, other than any obligations subsisting before the agent's appointment, shall be borne by the appointed tax agent until such a time as the Commissioner General accepts another tax agent. You get it. The Commissioner General here comes into play. I hope you know who the Commissioner General is or where he's coming from. This is the big man in tax authorities. Like in Zambia here, we have um, currently Mr. King, Kingsley Chan is the Commissioner General at ZRA. That is the man we're talking about here. A man that's going to, to approve your appointment of a tax agent. Okay, so we move on again from that slide to here.
we let's understand the registration of the tax agent how do we register a tax agent the appointed agent who apply for VAT registration in the normal way where the appointed agent is already registered for VAT for some other business the agent will still apply for a separate VAT registration based on the same taxpayer identification number the TPIN okay the words tax agent will be added to the business name business activity will be indicated as tax agents the turnover will be that relating to the activities of the foreign principals in Zambia while assets of the business will be such assets as will be employed in the agents <clears throat> accountants and contact persons will be those appointed by the agents <laughs> you see so here these are two critical points accountants and contact persons will be those appointed by the agents the registered agent will be able to deal with any other foreign principles using the same registration provided the commissioner general is notified of any additions or subtractions to the list of principles companies dealt with let's move on let us look at accounting for VAT by the tax agent I know I'm cruising through this accounting for VAT by the tax agent how does a tax agent account for VAT this is an assumption that now the non-resident individual or contractor has appointed a tax agent here in Zambia how does that agent account for VAT so the answer is that the tax agent will arrange for tax invoices bearing details of the agents whenever the non-resident supplier wishes to raise uh, an invoice to the customer in Zambia the agent's tax invoices will be used with um, the non-resident supplier's name in brackets for example a tax invoice issued by Zambia Revenue Authority said that a tax agent for their principal XYZ consultants for consultant services rendered will appear as follows supplier name so you put the supplier name which is ZRA tax agent for XYZ consultants once this is read they know that it is a, 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 an issue or invoice that is relating to the to reverse VAT and what description do you need to put on that invoice we're being guided that services being supplied are specified it will be helpful where an agent represents more than one non-resident supplier to have a separate invoice book for each supplier at the end of the tax period the agent will fill out a VAT return declaring the output VAT charged during the period the return should be submitted to Zambia Revenue Authority ZRA on or before what date? 16th of the month following the end of the relevant period. Hope you got the idea. That's how we account for a uh, VAT by the tax agent. Moving forward. Number nine, let us understand the obligations of the tax agent. The tax agent, what are his obligations as a tax agent? His obligations are that the agent will be required to perform the following functions relating to tax on behalf of the non-resident supplier. A. To notify the Commissioner General, who will not unnecessarily deny acceptance of intention to take on a new principle or intention to terminate contract with an existing one. B. He needs to preserve and to produce any records or accounts relating to each principle. <laughs> See, these are his obligations as a tax agent. You don't just wake up and say, no, I'm a tax agent today. No, you need to follow protocol. And this is what we're saying. 
C. To submit a tax return. He needs to submit tax returns. D. To pay any tax or interest under the Act. And E. To comply with any requirement by the Commissioner General. In respect of the business, however, the non-resident supplier is liable in like manner as his agent for any liability under the Act arising from the performance of the above functions. We move on. Point number 10, agent's fees. What about agent's fees? How does the agent pay fees to the authorities? Listen to this. The tax agent will charge the non-resident supplier agent's fees that will attract VAT at 16% for the services. The VAT charged will not be eligible as input tax on the return raised on behalf of the non resident supplier. You see? So even the fees that he makes from the non resident, let's say I am the agent here in Zambia. I'm contracted by a non resident. He pays me 100,000. That 100,000 for the service. For being appointed as a, as a tax agent, I need to remit 16% to ZRA and I will not claim anything. I will not claim input VAT. <laughs> that 16% is unclaimable. You cannot claim it. You are not eligible to claim it. Okay? Let's hope that is understood. Let's move on. Now, here we have an example which I want you to do with me. We, we put this reverse VAT in a scenario and we try to sort it out. We solve it so that we have an understanding. Example question one. Breathe in, breathe out and take your time. <clears throat> okay. So here, here is an example. <clears throat> it reads... You are employed in a firm of chartered accountants. You are dealing with the tax affairs of MM Limited, a Zambia resident company engaged in farming. It's engaged in farming. While it's performing your work, you discover that the managing director has been arranging with suppliers abroad to under-declare the value of MM Limited's tax invoices on imported farming inputs at the border, resulting in a significant underpayment of import duties by the company during the year. Before we even go further, let me just say something here. So the managing director is arranging with the supplier but to under-declare. Please, I'm urging uh, each and every uh, companies out there, under-declaring of tax invoices is a crime. Okay, because you are committing what we call fraud, which is leading to tax evasion. This is what is happening here. There is issues of fraud leading to tax evasion. You know that tax evasion is uh, the, legal, the illegal means to avoid tax. Okay, we continue. You have further obtained the following information. Relating to the transactions that took place during the chart year. 2021, you have been given two points. Point number one says, MM Limited paid a rent of 16,200 net on 1st October 2021 for accommodation for a new director. You are paying rent of accommodation for a new director for the period from 1st October 2021 to December 2021, the tenants' agreement was entered into between the director and the landlord. That's point number one. So point one basically is about rent being paid for the director. Anyway, we'll, we'll see how they require these and if we need to answer it, we'll answer it. Point number two. MM Limited engaged the foreign company Zangzen Limited to install a new ultra modern irrigation system. Installation works took 14 days and Zangzen Limited issued an invoice on its own behalf 
as it did not have enough time to appoint or a tax agent in Zambia. Just here, you can be able to tell that here in point two, issues of reverse VAT is arising because the non-resident is offering services of installing a, an irrigation system, a farming irrigation system, but he has not appointed a tax agent. So meaning that he cannot avoid reverse VAT. In continuation, the invoice issued by the foreign company to MM Limited was denominated in the United States dollars and had a value of $30,000. So that's the cost of a service that will be uh, done by the non-resident for MM Limited, $30,000. The exchange rate on the date of issue of the invoice was 10 quarter per dollar. What is the question? Let's see the question. The question says, required advise MM Limited using appropriate supporting com computations of the taxation implications of each of the above transactions. Transaction number one, what would be the taxation implications? And transaction number two for the end of 31st December. So we want to find out the taxation implications for point one and point two. Okay, so what we do is um, what we are going to do. We we'll read the required once more for, for, for clarity's sake and understanding, then we move on to so, sort it out. So, uh, required says advise MM Limited using appropriate supporting computations of the taxation implications of each of the above transactions. One, to two for the year ended 31st December 2021. Okay, so we go back on the information and see. Can I open another tab where we do our computation? Here, a blank one here. Yes. So, point number one. Point one, we go back and see, point one, um, we are told that MM Limited paid rent of 16,200 net, understand that one, he paid what net, this is your point of focus, net and gross, I will try to highlight it, can I? Okay, say so whatever. Anyway, let's see. Um, 16,200 net on 1st October 2021. So, if rent has been paid on behalf of the director net for the period from 1st October 2021 to December 2021, the tenants agreement was entered into between the director and the landlord. Another point to note here. The who is in agreement? It's the director and the landlord. But who has paid the rent? It is the employer. So meaning that the government or the Zambia Revenue Authority, their interest is to tax. Who are they going to tax? The employee or the employer who is the director? Or the employer or the employee who is the director? ZRA will tax the employee, the director, because that's those are the people who have entered into the agreement, the director and the landlord. Okay, so how will this be taxed? Will they be taxed net of 16.2? No, 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 no. Let's now go on computation. You see, this 16,200 quarter uh, net which was paid by the employer MMM Limited will need to be grossed up before it is paid to uh, the tax authorities through pay as you end we did uh, i did a topic previously pay as you end you can go through and see how the computation are done yes so we move on and try to do this computation so we'll say 
Um, MM Limited. Will be required. Will be required to gross. Will be required to gross up rental income. Okay. That's what, that's what is visible, rental amount and added to added to the of a director. Okay. Of a new director. For the month of October 2021. Mm -hmm. Then how do we gross up 2021? I just spoke about grossing up. If you, if the employer is paying net, you need to gross up. So the computation there will be how much are you paying the, the, the employer paid 16,200 on behalf of the director. So to gross it up, we bring in the issues of withholding tax. Rental income has a component of withholding tax, which is 10% of what? 10% of your rental income should be remitted to Zambia Revenue Authority. So, grossing up will be this. We gross up by 100 divided by 90. We remove 10% to 90, which should give us 18,000, 18,000 kwacha. So we just answered point one. Let's move on point two. Let's move on on point two. So we review back, we go back to our slide. Point two says MM Limited engaged the foreign company than Zen Limited to install. Now, this is where the issues of reverse VAT is. How do we know that this is reverse VAT? Anyway, everything is already explained in this. Everything is already explained uh, in this. We said, number one, how we knew that this is a reverse VAT transaction. The non-resident contractor did not appoint a tax agent here in Zambia. He issued an invoice himself to the customer here in Zambia, the resident here in Zambia. That's how we identified it. Okay? So, I prepared something for you. Um, Point one, we just tackled. Mm -hmm. Solution number one, already done. Rents, MMPLC will be required to do what? To gross up the rental amount and add it to the emoluments of the new director for the month of October 2019. An amount of what? 18,000. I just showed you how that was computed. Uh, and this will be added to the emolument of the new director and tax underpay as you end. Second point, the gross tax rentals paid by MM Limited on behalf of the directors will be allowed as an expense for income tax purposes. But for reverse VAT, yes, there are five major points that come into play. Okay, five major points. Number one, reverse VAT will apply to this transaction because the installation service provided by the foreign company Zanzen Limited qualifies to be classified as an imported service and Zanzen Limited did not appoint 
an agent to act on his behalf for VAT purposes. You see, if the non-resident does not appoint a tax agent to act on his behalf for VAT purposes, that is purely, purely reverse VAT. Point number two, what will happen is that MM Limited will have to charge itself reverse VAT of 48,000 quarter. How does this 48,000 come into play? Remember, the Zambian tax VAT uh, rate is 16%. So this was in dollars, mind you. Remember, it was in dollars, $30,000. So $30,000 will have to be multiplied by the rate in quarter, which gives us 300,000 quarter. This is where you're seeing this 300,000 quarter here is coming from here. 300,000 quarter. So multiplied by the rate, the uh, VAT rate here is 16%, 48,000. Now you see the difference. This 48,000, instead of it being claimed as input VAT, it cannot be claimed because uh -huh. Because of what? It will not be claimed because this becomes automatically becomes output VAT. So instead of you claiming it, it will be added in your return and you submit it to the Zambian Authority and pay it. You see? It will be included as part of MM Limited as output VAT. Simple. Number three. The VAT will form part of the cost of the installation as it is not claimable. Okay, it's not claimable. You cannot claim. Yes, that's why it's reverse VAT. You cannot claim it is reverse. It, it, it's, it's being transferred to you as a liability. So you will find yourself paying it as as uh, the customer, the recipient. Point number four: MM Limited will recognize total capital expenditure of three hundred forty-eight thousand. You see. The full amount, that is the cost at which you uh, you paid for the service of the installation, plus the VAT amount, which will be 348000 That what That's what will be recognized in, uh, as total capital expenditure. But there's good news of capital allowances. You are eligible to claim. You are eligible to claim capital allowances at 100%, reason being because you are dealing in farming implements uh, implements proper uh, equipment implements planned in farming claim that what 100 percent so here we are told mm limited will recognize total capital expenditure of 348,000, and this is made up of cost net of 300,000 times yes and vat of 48,000. And MM Limited will claim capital allowances of 348000 That's the beauty. You spend this, but as long as you're in farming, you are able to claim that in the lama. In total, 348000 Point number five. Further MM Limited will have to deduct with holding tax of 60000 What is the rate for withholding tax? It's 20%. 20% of the full cost. And limit it to the Zambia Revenue Authority. So that's the only loss you make, I think. The withholding tax component. Because you're dealing with a non-resident. So the rate for dealing with a non-resident is 20%. So 20% of the total cost will be remitted to Zambia Revenue Authority. Well, uh, this is where we come to our end of this uh, presentation. My name is Martin McCoffey. Uh, looking forward to do uh, more topics, but only if you people out there, you subscribe and like the video, follow my channel, and please comment what type of topics you would like me to highlight or talk about. Thank you so much for your time. Good day.